Hi guys. It's almost 11 o'clock at night on a Monday evening. I've got no idea if Mum's going to call me, so the phone might disturb us. And I've started this even though I'm dying for a piss, but we'll see how long I can cross my legs for, won't we? <laughs> I should have gone for a piss first, but never mind. Um, my shed door is done. It's been painted. Not a very good job, but I'm not going to knock him for it because he did try to do it in the rain. It kept. Um, we've just had showers all day. You know, one minute it's raining, next minute it's nice and sunny. And then rain, and then nice and sunny. And then rain, and then nice and sunny. <sighs> the British weather is enough to piss anyone off. Even those who have lived here all our life and are completely used to it. Although I would welcome snow because it would be a nice change from friggin' rain. <coughs> uh, anyway, um, I've actually been awake since about. I don't know. It must be since around about 6 o'clock this morning. Because I went to bed at 3, so I've only had about 3 hours sleep. I went to bed, actually I went to bed at about half one, two o'clock, my usual time. And it took me a good hour or more to fall asleep because I had an anxiety, a minor anxiety attack, but still it's annoying as hell. I don't think I've ever had a big one, but I don't think I'd want one because little ones are bad enough. So yeah. I didn't actually get to sleep until about 3 o'clock in the bloody morning. Uh, and then I couldn't fall asleep again, and I was... Actually, I think it could partly be because I was watching... Well, it was suspicious to me. They may not have, you know, been doing anything suspicious, but... This big white Ford Transit van came on the car park outside, turned around, drove off. So, of course, I didn't think nothing of it, you know, perhaps turning around. A lot of cars drive into this car park to turn around. Um, ten minutes later, it was back. And it came on at the car park, turned around, stopped, and drove off. And it kept doing that for about an hour and a half. Every ten to fifteen minutes, coming back to the car park, turning around, it actually parked up twice for five minutes, and then drove off again. Weird. <laughs> and it was a young driver with a passenger who was probably in his mid-fifties, I guess. <coughs> so, it just looked a bit suspicious to me as I kept coming back, you know, and disappearing and coming back. Especially at that sort of early hour, hour of the morning. But either way, I've been away since a bit. Bloody six. The courier turned up at 8.55. I know they sort of start work at 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, he picked up the parcels, so that's good. They're gone. I've just got these brake calibers to pack up and post tomorrow. <coughs> uh, was going to do it today, but I just sort of got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate it when I get like that. I've actually cleared a lot of crap from off this bench. Undecided about those speakers. I'm not sure if they're actually worth putting up on eBay or not. To be honest, I think if I put one on eBay, I'm not going to get a great deal for them. I might just cut these this wire off and uh, ditch the speakers. These are cloth is crap on them as well. I don't think it's a full set either. It might be, you know, left, right, centre. That would be your left and right speakers. And that's your centre. Actually, going by this layout here, I'm guessing that is your left and right. So it might actually be a set. Or I could just put them back up on the kitchen cupboard and keep hold of them for a little while. Just in case I can find something to do with them. <laughs> oh, and speaking of speakers, I was experimenting in the um, bedroom today. Uh, I 
I've got my little black unbranded speakers back up there because I tried to run that through this so I could run two speakers my two Sony's one's down there the other one's on the bed but it didn't work I tried making up a lead because I've only got one working jack on this speaker jack um, the right side is faulty I get sound out to the speaker if I wiggle the wire, but it's it's very intermittent. Um, so I've got an issue there. Probably a loose connection on the inside, so I'll tip this on its side one day and take the base off and have a look. So what I've done, and I know that this won't harm the system, I've got both of these speakers on the shelf wired into one jack and on the left side socket. Uh, these are only little 4 ohm speakers. I don't know what the wattage is. Probably very small. They are only small stereo speakers. Uh, but the speakers that came with this stood on the floor. But Biggles sold those separately. So yeah, they were they were big old floor speakers that came with this. So I really don't think these two pissy little speakers are gonna harm it. Because that's got quite a good volume range on that knob as well. But it's working. And the reason I'm using these is because... There's a lot of audio crackle through the Sony speakers. And I don't just mean the crackle that you get, or sometimes get, from a record player anyway. I'm actually talking about speaker crackles. It's like the record player didn't like these modern Sony speakers, so... But I don't get it on the um, little speakers. They're a little bit tinny. Which is annoying. <laughs> for me. I like a, I don't like heavy bass. But I do like a little bit of bass. On it. But I've got my knobs adjusted on here. To get it as bassy as possible. So. Uh, the only thing I haven't done. Is hooked up antennas. For. Um, the radio. But other than that, it works. It plays plays beautifully, actually. It sounds better once I get a better pair of speakers and that right-hand jack fixed. But yeah, I played a compilation record there. Uh, 30 top 10 hits from 1989, that's what I was playing. Don't know. I don't know when they stopped producing records, so I don't know if I'm going to get anything from the 90s on records. But um, if I was going to get any records in my collection, I would have to come from either the 60s, the 70s, or the 80s. Preferably the 80s, as that would be my favourite decade. And as much as I'd actually hate to admit it, it is actually one of my favourite decades. I don't know why. Maybe because I was born in 83, so I partially grew up with 80s music. 90s is also a favourite decade of mine, and again, I grew up through the 90s. I grew up through the 80s and 90s, so maybe that's why I like them. So yeah, I've actually, uh, I've been productive, but everywhere is just a friggin' mess. <laughs> uh, I might put that record player up on Gumtree. Like I said, I don't want to post it. Because I wouldn't trust it in the post, to be honest. Uh, these record players are too fragile. Too delicate, so... It would be collection only, I think. So I'll try it on Gumtree. Now I know this one, apart from the speaker jack, is working fine. I might actually try a couple of speakers on that one. Just to see what it looks like now that I've got the proper jacks and whatnot. Because I know the audio was crap coming out of that audio jack going through an amplifier. But again, it may not have liked the amplifier. Even though the amplifier's got a phono input on it. It's the audio switch. I got that from down the recycle centre. <laughs> Here, the CD tuner. That's all it is. So you can like make one amplifier port into two, 
that makes sense. If you needed, because um, a lot of amplifiers I've come across only have like three or four inputs. Uh, what's this little old one got here? That I paid the grand sum of a five or four. Uh, maybe I need to ground the phono to it. Would that be the problem? Yeah, this has only got tuner, tape, and phono, and tape out. But, uh, like I said, a lot of them, especially new, this is probably quite an old one actually, as it's a wooden boxed one. It's a realistic one, realistic brand. Uh, yeah, a lot, the modern, more modern ones I've got in the lounge they've um, got four because I've got the CD but I suppose if you've got like I don't know a couple of CD players or something or you want to hook DVD audio through it as well and you could use something like that as a splitter and you've just got the switch to switch between the two you could make something like that yourself piss easy it's just a switch that switches between those two um, inputs that's all it is <laughs> there is nothing else in this box it's just literally that switch switches between these two that's your output to your amplifier so that's what it does the switches between these <clears throat> so you could with a switch you know make one yourself same way I did it with the um, speaker in the bathroom which is nice to chill out to when I'm having a bath, I'll put this switch on this speaker, you see. It's just a two-way switch. That's now set to the bathroom speaker. That would be off. And that is this speaker. And the reason I did it is because that's only designed for two speakers. So uh, I didn't want to risk overloading that by running more speakers than it's designed. So I just had a switch installed on that speaker. Someone spoke to me. Hardly anyone PMs me, and then sometimes I just get a random person PM me out of the blue like that. Right. Turn that off. No, I can't. I want that back on. I'm going to sort that cable clip out as well. I was watching a video from Big Clive today, and uh, I think I'm going to try what he did on this set. This was just an old set that was given to me. Um, whoops. But what he did, he converted a set like this, but I think it was a string of 100, not a string of 12, that ran on a solar panel, um, to run on a, like a USB charger that plugs into your mains outlet and all he did with that was um, put a 22 ohm resistor on a live, a 22 ohm resistor on the neutral and connected the lights to it and that was it um, but I don't know if I'd actually need to go bigger for a set of 12 or I don't know right but, uh, anywho... Oh, I sold the um, Barracuda that was picked up. His son was actually in high school. I wasn't expecting... someone that young, to be honest. <laughs> but it got picked up. Um, so I went out and treated myself to a Lego set, like I said I would. And the um, Chevy Corvette model. Is it the Corvette? I can't remember. <laughs> um, here's the box. Does it say on the box? Chevy Corvette Z06. That's what that's based on. And there's now the R8 underneath it. Because it's part of the Lego Speed Champions range. But, uh, 
twelve ninety nine they cost each. Um, and they obviously do larger sets that are going to cost more. It might seem a lot just for that little car, but they've got to pay the car companies a percentage, you know, royalties out of their profits as well. So that's why Lego sets that are based on, you know, another theme such as Star Wars. What else can I think of off the top of my head? Disney. Disney's Frozen. Uh, the Marvel superheroes, the DC Comics superhero sets, they're all, if you look, noticed, they're all a little bit pricier than um, their Lego City sets like these. But uh, the reason for that is, as I said, they've got to pay the original copyright owners royalties. Anyway, I think I covered everything in this video, so I'm going to shut it down. I don't know, mum might ring within the next five minutes or so. But uh, I'm going to shut down and go for a pee because I really am getting desperate now. I need, to that here. I need to go for a pee. Please, sir, can I go to the toilet? Look, hell, I must have one on tonight. Anyway. Thanks a lot for watching. I've got no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Um, I've got to pack those brake calipers up and post those. In fact, I might do that in a little bit. So all I've got to do is pick it up in the morning and go across to the post office. Uh, I want to make a Lego bus for my town. All towns have a bus service. <laughs> I'll eventually make two, but for now I'm just going to make one. Um, so I might start on that tomorrow actually who knows we'll see what tomorrow brings anyway thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again tomorrow bye <laughs>